chains, I hear the chains falling. Cause there is power, there is power in the name of Jesus. It's time to pray for America. And it's time to stop posting things on your Facebook wall against America. It's time to pray for your leadership. The Bible says, first of all, I need you to pray for your leadership, that supplications, prayers, and intercessions that we be made for kings and all that are in authority, that you may lead a quiet and peaceable life in all godliness and honesty. It's time to pray for America. What else are we contending for? We're contending for righteous and smart, if I could say that too, leaders to rule our nation. The Bible says in Proverbs 29 too, when the righteous are in authority, the people rejoice. But when the wicked man rules, the people groan. A righteous man. Abraham Lincoln was a righteous man. And this is a quote. I have been driven many times upon my knees by the overwhelming conviction that I had nowhere else to go. My own wisdom and that of all about me seemed insufficient for that day. Abraham Lincoln, whom this nation was founded in and upon, was a, a man of God. Well, what if we have a leader that's not a man of God? Now, he may say he knows God or trusts in God, but we don't know what God he's trusting in. He, I don't know if he's trusting in the one from the book of Revelations that says, I am he that was and is and is to come. You know the one in Revelations? What if he's not a godly man? Well, the Bible says the heart of the king is in the hand of the Lord. Instead of despising him and speaking evil about him and, and causing venom to be spewed out about him, we need to pray for him. What else are we contending for? We're contending for the hearts and the destinies of our children. The Bible says in Psalms 127, verse 3 and 4, Blessed, behold, children are a heritage of the Lord. The fruit of the womb is the reward. Like arrows in the hands of a warrior, so are the children of one's youth. I want to say something briefly about this because we have to continue to move on. We are contending for the hearts and the destiny of our children. There's never been a day when so many babies are being aborted. What is that? That is the enemy taking out our Caleb's, our Joshua's, our Deborah's, our Peter's, our, our, the Apostle Paul's. It's time for those of us who are parents to be watchmen in our own houses and not put the responsibility of praying for our kids over on somebody else. We have a promise, train up a child in the way that he should go, and when he is old, he will not depart from it. He may sway, he may go another way, but guaranteed one thing, that the prayers of a righteous man avails much, and you have more authority in your own household. Are you listening? Because that's your domain. God said, I've given you dominion, authority to rule, especially in your own household. My friend was born again in 2003, and I was believing God for a friend. I didn't want just any friend. I wanted a God friend. I wanted a friend I could just be a God friend with. Because you know what? To me, nothing else matters. For me to live is Christ. I don't want anything else. And, and long story short, you know, this girl, that I, woman I met in Pilates one day, you know, she, she was a good Catholic girl and just a nice woman, and we started walking together. And she would talk about God. We'd talk a little bit about God, and she just had that, uh, you know, love for God. And by about the third walk, I finally said to her, we started talking about Jesus, then I finally said to her, Susan, have you ever heard of the baptism in the Holy Spirit. Now, you have to remember, I'm new to the community. Nobody knows me. She's a mom in the community. She knows all the same people I know in the community, in the school. And we're going for a walk. And I'm like, really, God? And I said, have you ever heard of the baptism? Because you know what? Some of us, we can hide in our houses and put our lights out and put it under a bushel. But you know, God has another plan. He's got people out there that need to hear what you have to say about him. And not be afraid of their faces. And she says, no. She goes, I never heard of the baptism of the Holy Spirit. I went, great. I took her in my house, brought her up in my room, my office at the time, April 28th, 
2003. She can even tell you it was 10.35 a.m. And I prayed for her to be saved and then prayed for her to be baptized in the Holy Spirit. She started speaking with other tongues as the Spirit gave her utterance. And I was like, here we go. My secret is out. But she's really smart. She's wise like I am. She's not going to, like, do anything crazy. But I said to myself, now I have a prayer partner. So I started, like, discipling her. And I said, Susan, we're going to, you know, we're going to pray. We're going to pray for the nation. We're going to pray for the cities. We're going to pray for the world. And then when we would get together to pray, I'd have a small Bible study with her. And then you know what we prayed for? And we've been doing it since 2000. 2003, we prayed for our children. We contended for the hearts and the destiny of our children. We prayed for open doors. We prayed for healthy friendships. We prayed that they would get into the right college. Now we're praying that they'll get the right jobs. It doesn't end. So we're praying and we're contending for the hearts and the destinies of our children. Moms, when you have those babies, it doesn't end. You gave birth to them in the natural, but you still got to contend for their destiny in the spiritual. When my twins were born, I'll tell you straight up, they were 11 weeks premature and right in the OR, they were taking that baby out of me by C-section and the, you know, the veil was up because you don't want to see nothing. And I'm telling you straight up, right in the OR, I was contending for the destiny of my children. I reminded God of what he told me. He said, Margie, because God doesn't lie when it comes to your children. He said, you're going to have twins in your first pregnancy, which were in vitro. He says, and a singleton in your second, and in your second pregnancy, you're going to get pregnant on your own. And right in there, I was telling God, this is what you said. This is what you said. This is what you said. And I was praying for my kids. And my one daughter, you know, she wasn't breathing. Long story short, she's in college, out of college. She work for Vista AmeriCorps. Now she wants to go to Hillsong United Australia to go to Bible school. There is a prophetic anointing on her life. I didn't tell her about it. I didn't want her to know her, me to be the one, but the Holy Ghost and his hand is upon her. The other two, they are, they are becoming more and more on fire for God. What is that? It's the power of a praying parent. Straight up. We are contending for them. Let's go on. We are contending for our neighborhoods, cities, and regions. John Ramirez is somebody I discovered through a friend from California. He was discipled by David Wilkerson. Wake up, church! He was a high-level warlock who worked and submitted to, quote, his father, the devil. As a child, he was dedicated to the devil. Over time, he grew in rank, and I learned something from him. You can grow in rank in the kingdom of darkness as a human being. I'm not getting into all of it. He would speak in demonic tongues and would pray all night and into the morning. And one thing he said, he says, you can't get any Christians to pray 15 minutes in the church. He said, I would pray in demonic tongues all night and into the morning. He said, we would put word curses on people and cities, and regions, and nations. He said he would leave his body, and he would go over cities, regions, states, and counties, and he'd spew word curses. He would go into neighborhoods. Remember, did I tell you we were contending for our neighborhoods, cities, and regions? He would go into neighborhoods in the spirit realm in order to weaken it in the natural realm. He said he would speak word curses. If he would see people praying, although, he said, and this is his, the way he talks, he said there was no accomplishment in that neighborhood. He said that neighborhood was blessed, sanctified through prayer, and you couldn't touch it. Other neighborhoods, he said, quote, it's party time. We're contending with the adversary. So our title is Prayer Alert. This is the alert defined. You ready? Adjective. Quick to notice any unusual and potentially dangerous or difficult circumstance. Vigilant. An alert police officer discovered a truck full of explosive. Cinnamons. Cinnamon. Hallelujah. Oh, sorry. Just couldn't pronounce the word, so I thought I'd fake it. Vigilant, 
watchful, attentive, observant. God said, look up the word alert. Now, the state of being watchful for possible danger. Security forces were placed on alert. Synonyms. Vigilance, watchfulness, attentiveness, alertness, circumspection. A verb, warn, warn, warn. Warn someone of a danger, threat, or a problem, typically with the intention of having it avoid. Thank you, Lord. Praise you, Jesus. Avoided or dealt with. He alerted people to the dangers of X, Y, and Z. Synonym, warn, notify, forewarn, put on one's guard, tip off, clue in, prayer alert. God said in Isaiah 62, I have set watchmen on your walls. Mm. O United States of America, which shall never hold their peace. I warn you and I charge you that we are on alert in this nation right now as we speak. I think Pastor Joe had an alert from God in a dream or in a scripture or in a vision. I don't know how he got it, but I remember he inboxed many of us about it. We are on alert. Something is coming and we need to pray. It has to be avoided. How can we abort it? We can abort it through prayer. I'm telling you, there is something that is, can be avoided if we pray. A watchman is a person hired to guard, especially at night. A watchman, Hebrew word is shamar. It means to hedge about as with thorns, to protect, attend to, look narrowly, and preserve. I've set watchmen on the walls of the United States of America. I'm giving you a prayer alert today, and I'm giving you a warning. Take heed to the warning. Watchmen, T-S-A-P-H-A, in the Hebrew means to lean forward, to peer in the distance, to observe, to await. Behold, look up. Wait for, keep the watch, watchman. What, it, what that simply means is when you're a watchman on a wall, you see things the inner, the inner in, in people that are inside the wall don't see. You can see trouble coming from afar. And when you see it coming, you can not only warn the good that are within the city walls, but you can put a stop to it. You can put a stop to, to terrorism. You can put a stop to destruction. We put a stop to the assassination of Ronald Reagan. Yes, we did. We're not going to get into it. Moffat's translation sentry is a person, especially a soldier, stationed to guard a group against surprise attack. What is the surprise attack? John 10, 10. Of course, the thief comes by. He, to steal, kill, and destroy. But he goes about as a roaring lion. So God is saying be alert spiritually. 1 Peter 5, I'm going to go through these in the next minute and a half. 1 Peter 5, 8 says be sober. Be vigilant. Why? Your adversary, the devil, the one that you conquered through Christ. As a roaring lion walks about seeking whom he may devour. That word vigilant means wake, watchful, and watch. Never be off your guard. 1 Peter 4, 7 says, but the end of all things, it is at hand. I don't know who said it, but somebody said, I'm telling you, Jesus is coming soon. Be ye therefore sober not complacent, and watch unto prayer. Ephesians 6, 18 says, praying always with all prayer and supplication in the spirit, and what? Watching thereunto with all perseverance and supplication for all saints. The Greek word is A-G-R-U-P-E-N-E-O. It means to be sleepless. Express is not a mere wakefulness, but a watchfulness. For example, the TV could be on, but I'm not watching the TV. So, you know, we're on. We're Christians. We, yeah, we're singing songs. They know us by our love and all that. Now, but we got our head in the sand. God is saying, I'm putting on a prayer alert. There's something coming that can be avoided if you're not, don't have your head in the sand. Lastly, 1 Thessalonians 5, 6 through 8. Hmm. Therefore, let us not sleep as do others. See, you're here today. 
I think some people slept in. I wanted to sleep in. I had three hours of sleep. But we, don't, we are not of them that draw back. We're soldiers in the army of God. We're disciplined. We're trained. We're getting ready. We know what we want, and we want to live for eternity, make a difference on this earth. Let us therefore not sleep as do others. He wasn't condemning them. He was just saying that's their deal. <laughs> but let us watch and be sober. For they that sleep, sleep in the night. And they that be drunken are drunken in the night. But let us, soldiers in prayer, army of God, men and women, let us who are of the day be sober, putting on the breastplate of faith and love and for a helmet the hope of salvation. Prayer alert. There is a prayer alert going out right now for this nation. I heard it in my spirit. Heard it in my spirit. Believe the prophets and you'll prosper. I heard it in my spirit. We're going to pray this prayer for America. Let's pray it together. Stand. And then I'm going to lay hands on everyone. You have your prayer? That was a fun day. Wasn't it a fun day? <sighs> and this is going up on the Internet. See, this meeting won't end. That's the beauty of media. Does everybody have their card? Ready? We're going to pray the word. We're not going to pray in the spirit because we're done. But you could take this home and pray this at home. Let's read together. According to Psalms 91, I confess that America dwells in the secret place of the Most High, and we as a nation abide under the shadow of the Almighty. Lord, you are our refuge and our fortress, our God. In you do we trust. We trust you to protect this nation from the snare of the fowler and from the perilous pestilence. You shall cover us with your feathers, and under your wings we will take refuge. Your wings, oh, I'm sorry, may the word of God and the name of Jesus be this nation's shield and buckler. We will not be afraid of the terror by night, nor of the pestilence that walks in darkness, nor of the destruction that any enemy will plot, for anything that is hidden will be revealed to our national security. I confess that no evil will befall this nation, neither shall any plague come near or within our borders. Heavenly Father, as an intercessor, I give your angels charge over this land. As a nation, may we set our love upon Jesus, call upon Jesus, and honor Jesus. I pray that the decisions made by our leaders would be divinely directed by you. Therefore, the leaders would be men and women of discernment, understanding, and knowledge so that the stability of America will continue. I pray that the righteous would be in the authority so that the people in our land can rejoice and live in peace. Amen. I'm going to ask you to line up, and I want to lay hands on everyone. Our ushers know what to do. I'm proud to be an American, aren't you? I am going to pray for my nation. We are on alert. I, I have a, I have, come on, come on, let's do this quick. I want, to, I want to keep my word and try to get you out as soon as possible. We have a, one of our drivers that takes us into this city said to us, he said, I'm telling you straight up, he said, you see some of these homeless people? You see some of these cab drivers? He said, they're undercover. He said, New York City, there's so much that goes on here. He said, if the public knew, we wouldn't be living in peace. We'd be emotional wrecks. So the government doesn't tell us everything. But I love it when the Holy Ghost tells us stuff. And he's saying to you, he's saying, America, you're under a prayer alert right now. Take heed to what I'm saying. All right, I'm going to pray over you. But before we do, <clears throat> I want you to close your eyes and lift up your hands. There's going to be no music because we don't do music when we do this kind of uh, ministry of laying. It's already on me. So, Lord, I just thank you that you told me to go into the cities and into the regions and into the, into the places and set a mark on the foreheads of those that would sigh and cry. I pray for these individuals, Father, that you would anoint them with fresh oil in the area of their prayer life. And even as you said, we know you did it by impartation earlier, 
but increase them in discernment, wisdom, do a new thing in them in prayer in the name of Jesus. Jesus, yes there is, there is power. 